Hey, I got you that lucky stuff game you said you wanted to play. Oh, yeah, I guess. You're wearing a lucky t-shirt right now. No. And the hat. Oh, yeah. Whatever, weirdo, here's your game. New Super Lucky's Tale? I thought this was supposed to be a port on Switch. What's new about it? Let's have a look here. Playful Studio... Play Playful Studios is an hour from here? Well, why finish Googling that when I can just drive an hour and ask him myself? Oh, you actually work here. That's weird. You know, I actually fully scripted this video from start to finish. It's riddled with spelling mistakes and grammatical errors, but <laughs> I did it. But honestly, standing here, reading this, it just feels wrong to be this meticulous and exact about a game that at its core is just so whimsical, lighthearted, and fun. So you know what? <laughs> I'm winging this whole thing for better or worse. <laughs> Let's have some fun. Also, I'm giving away a couple copies of the game, so leave a comment down below and hit that like button if you want to win one. Hey, so first up, you know that this game is not a port, right? Now, I know what you're thinking, uh, but Woodison, I played or I at least saw Super Lucky's Tale on Xbox. Now I'm seeing it on Switch, that, that's definitely a port, right? But here's the thing, new Super Lucky's Tale was never on Xbox. I, I'm stressing this because I actually didn't even realize that myself. I got the download code for the game, I played through the entire freaking thing, and it wasn't until I was sat looking at the credits roll realizing I had just had a ton of fun with an amazing game that not enough people talk about. Something wasn't quite lining up, so I started doing some research. I YouTubed the Xbox version of the game, and immediately I realized it's a completely different freaking game. To start with, the intro and voiceover for the start of the game was completely different. Lucky himself has been redesigned and he's just so much more adorable now than he was on Xbox. And as you saw at the start of this video, I was actually lucky enough to have the opportunity to go to Playful Studios, which is right around the corner from my house apparently. I learned quite a bit about this adorable little action platformer. So it turns out, New Super Lucky's Tale has been in development for the last 16 months. They actually looked at their game and they thought, you know, we could do better. That's exactly what they did. They spent 16 months developing a brand new version of the game called New Super Lucky's Tale exclusively for the Nintendo Switch. Which, another thing that blew me away is how beautiful and crisp and vibrant this game looks on Switch. I would honestly rank it just visually up there with other first party Nintendo IPs for how pristine and clean it looks. It's so clear to see that they have retouched, reworked, it just changed every little element element or even the big elements in some way like nothing has been left untouched that the team considers new super lucky's tale the next game in the lucky's tale franchise while it's not quite a sequel to their last game it's just too new too changed too different to be considered a remaster or a definitive edition of the last game it's just too new and that is why they slapped a little new on there for New Super Lucky's Tale. And I know I'm being very generic, so let me talk about some details. Some Lucky's details. <laughs> See what I did there? I regret it. As I said, every element has been retouched, reworked in some way, and something I can really tell they focused on is just the movement of Lucky. The way he controls, all his abilities that he can do, and just his base movements and the way that they all blend together, there's no better word for it than just flow. It flows so fantastically. So Lucky's main ability and the best part about him is that he can burrow underground. You also have a jump and a double jump and then while you're midair you can corkscrew your way slam down back into the ground. And this is where the flow comes into it because you can like swim in this game just using the earth as water. So inherently fun to just 
control lucky in this game. And I relate it to like Mario and Mario Odyssey, how you have that three peak jump. I mean, sure, it's a mechanic that helps you get more height with Mario, which helps you with your platforming, but it's so inherently fun to do on its own that I found myself running around the worlds with Mario just trying to pull off that three peak jump because it's so fun to do. So with controls that are this fun just on their own at their core, all you really have to do now is build a good game around it with great level designs and that's exactly what they did too. The main gameplay is the 3D platformer running around collecting coins, gems, pages, and stomping on enemy heads. Kind of similar to like Spyro or Mario 64 where you have the 3D hub world and then you go into doorways or you shoot down tunnels to go into a level. And the levels are so extremely varied. One second you'll be 3D platforming, the next stage could be a 2D side scroller, or you'll become a top down, or you'll become a marble and be tilting a board around, maybe solving puzzles, mini games, boss battles. I don't know, a freaking bullet hell level? Okay, maybe it's not quite a bullet hell, but I'm only now realizing it watching the footage back that these little green blast things are spelling out lucky smells as they go by. And that's honestly a perfect representation of the humor throughout this entire game. Okay, so while that is a lot of different kind of levels and there's even more I didn't talk about, the game doesn't ever feel like it's suffering from an identity crisis. It can't figure out what kind of game it wants to be. It all blends so well into this Banjo-Kazooie feeling genre. And I loved all of the different kinds of levels so much that I was always excited to get back to one of the other kinds. No two levels feel the same, even the ones within the similar genre. I think if I had to pick a favorite kind of level, I really liked the auto run levels. So it would show you the entire level first and then it would start and Lucky would just start moving along and you had to time your jumps and your screw attacks and your diving underground. They managed to use all the gameplay elements in every level variety in a different way and I thought that was brilliant, but it was just so fun. Oh, and speaking of collectibles, every level has one of the five letters of Lucky for you to find and if you find them all, you get a page. I didn't really talk about the story and the pages. That's the risk you run when you go off book and you tear your script up on the ground. <laughs> I'll do that next, but let me finish this. Okay, so that's a way to get a page by collecting all the letters and lucky. You can also find one hidden page in every level. If you collect over 300 coins in a level, you get a page for that too. And then you also get a page for finishing the level. So each level can get you four pages. Throw those into the book. The pages go towards unlocking the next area, the next world for you to go into. It's your way of progressing through the game. You don't have to get every page unless you're a collector at heart and that's gonna be really hard to do. You only need enough to progress and I love that. But what are the pages you might be asking? <laughs> in Lucky's Tale, and I really should have started with this but it's fine, you're still here, right? <laughs> in Lucky's Tale you play as Lucky. He's one of the cutest characters to ever grace the adventure platformer genre. He gets sucked up and taken away from his home village where he sets out on a journey through the Book of Ages, a magical artifact that opens doors to amazing new worlds. You have to recollect pages throughout the world. Throw them back into the book and restore peace in the world while making a ton of new adorable friends along the way. Like these country bumpkin worms, which are my favorite characters in the game and I told them that when I went to Playful Studios. Maybe it's because I have a soft spot for the country living out here in Texas. But somehow, okay, so in this game all the characters, other than the main characters, have that bubbly gibberish language that a lot of Nintendo 64 platformers had. You know, where they kind of go like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> They don't really say anything, but they do. Well, somehow, Playful managed to take the gibberish of these worms and give them a perfect southern twang. Keep all around and ruining my groove, though. Like, somehow, I know that he just said something about pickup trucks, sweet tea, and pecan pie. That's just good voice acting. <laughs> it's not a difficult game. It's pretty easy to hit the credits. You do unlock another world after the credits, Foxington, I believe that has a bunch of trial levels and those do step up the difficulty a little bit and it took me a while to work through those and then hit another ending. But yeah, it's not a difficult platformer and that's mostly thanks to the fact that it's so easy and fun to control. There was no artificial difficulty added in here by clunky controls that get you killed all the time, which I loved. A game doesn't have to be stupidly hard to be fun. I mean, look at pretty much any of Nintendo Nintendo's platformers. Is Mario Odyssey hard? No. Was the new Yoshi or Kirby games hard? <laughs> no. Was Kirby fun? No. <laughs> no. Why did we talk about the world design? My favorite one is absolutely the haunted carnival one with ghosts everywhere. I was fresh off of finishing Luigi's Mansion. My brain immediately got confused and I ran to this corner here and I don't know what it looks like I'm trying to do, but in my head I was trying to vacuum suck up underneath the bench. Beside the point. But this whole level was really fun actually. You had to run around getting tickets so that you could could open these cages and get the stuff inside. It's such a playground. Like this entire game is one big playground for you to mess around in. Yeah, man. 
why? Why did I tear up the script? I, I hope I've done okay. I'm all over the place, but I forgot to talk about the boss battles. I wonder if that's in here somewhere. Let me see. No, nope, that's the skip from the start. That's the platforming. That's talking about the story. I could have used that earlier. Anyway, I didn't mention the boss battles, but they're, they're, re they're really good. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. And listen, listen, listen. L hear me out here. <laughs> I do really, really, really love this game. I, it took me by surprise. I enjoyed the heck out of it. As I said, I finished it in one sitting, but it wasn't until I went to their studio and met them. So we just spent the entire day here at Playful. I had a lot of fun. They're really, really freaking nice people. Thanks everyone. They're there, they just didn't say anything. <laughs> so we wanted to give you this awesome little Oh, thank you. Wow, it's these. heavy. It's heavy and that's actually a tail. They are the nicest people and they are so passionate about this game. But they haven't made all that many games yet. They're still pretty new. But Lucky is their baby. It's their main game. And I don't feel like they know where Lucky's home is yet. And it's kind of, well, it's not, it's not sad. It's a little sad <laughs> when I paint the picture this way. Because it started as an Oculus VR game. And then it ended up on Xbox. <sighs> Xbox, cutesy platformers. They don't really go together all that well. I don't think that still felt like home to them. And I really feel like that's why they worked so hard over the last 16 months to polish this up and make it something really special. And I can't help but picture that adorable little fox guy not having a home. I mean, he literally gets swept away from his home in the story and he's trying to find his way home. And I feel like it perfectly symbolizes the game itself and the development studio trying to find Lucky's home. And I, for one, feel like it's perfectly at home on the Switch. I know that sounds really corny, but everyone there was just so sweet. I can't help but be a little bit corny about this. And it's not just because they gave me a really cool hat and other really cool stuff and sponsored the video. I wouldn't say all of this if I didn't mean it. I mean, I would review the game, but I wouldn't go this crazy overboard with how much I love it and the whole giving it a home thing. Like that is straight from my heart. I feel it's really hard to recapture what made this genre of game so popular and so loved back in the Nintendo 64 days. And yet somehow they have managed to recapture that essence in New Super Lucky's Tale, and I love it. I'm sure there's like a link below or something, so I'd appreciate it if you clicky clacky tapped on that and gave Lucky a home today. <laughs> okay, buy from me. Buy from this cute little mullet wearing guy. <laughs> oh, Luigi's Mansion. I need to do that. All right, I'm gonna start working on that now. I'm tired. I'm really tired. <laughs> Okay, bye. I love you guys.